Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our weekend devotional. I thought I'd begin today in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. I will begin reading at verse 10. And we read, Paul writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I like the emphasis he puts there. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Sometimes we get this attitude that we need to be strong. We need to have it all together. We need to be on top of things. Paul says that's not the case. Be strong in the Lord. Trust in his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles, the deception, the trickery of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God and look out for that. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, this is where that deception often comes in. A lot of times, Satan tries to get us fighting the wrong battle. We get the attitude, we need to fight against this person. We need to fight against this agenda. We need to fight against the left. We need to fight against the right. We need to fight against this and that and whatever. The battle is not against people, friends. Our battle is not against people. And this is something that Satan is trying to blind us to. He's just trying to get us focused on one another on our offenses, on our issues, on the trouble that we have with other people. But we are not fighting other people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's all summed up in this last phrase, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So friends, first off, we need to see the truth about all of this. We need to recognize that we're not fighting against the left or the right or anybody else. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness. We're not fighting against people who offend us. We're fighting against spiritual wickedness. We're not fighting against people. We fight against the spirits who can work through them. So how? How do we fight against them? How do we stand? We go on into the armor of God. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I want to emphasize something there for a moment. We can sometimes be a little bit intimidated by the enemy. We can sometimes think, oh no, spiritual wickedness in high places, that's too big for me. That's too strong for me. No, it's not. No, it's not. God has defeated that already. God has overcome that already through his blood, through his cross. All is, all of that is defeated already. Sin and death and hell are defeated. So we don't need to be intimidated. We don't need to think that they're going to knock us off our feet. Our Lord, the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he's defeated all that already. All we need to do is stand. And stand with our armor on. So what do we have for armor? Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Stop there. Loins girt about with truth. Think of a belt. A belt holds everything together when you get dressed, right? It keeps everything from falling down or falling apart. Truth keeps everything from falling apart. We need to begin with the truth of the word of God. We need to stand with the word of God. That's going to hold everything else together. Moving on. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does a breastplate protect? Think about a suit of armor. A breastplate is covering up your chest area. It's covering up the vitals. It's going to protect your heart. So put on the breastplate of righteousness. It's going to protect your heart from bitterness, from unrighteousness, from offense, from all these things that want to come in and weaken it and poison it, all these things that the enemy wants to throw at it to to corrupt it, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand in the righteousness of God, and nothing is going to penetrate into your heart. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
Think about a good solid pair of boots. You're going to stand firmly in that. What are you going to stand on? The gospel of peace. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're going to stand on that. You're going to stand on, on the rock Christ Jesus. And when the enemy comes against you, and and he's going to try to knock you over, he's going to try to take you out of the fight, he's going to try to put you down on the ground, you're going to stand. You're going to stand firmly, you're going to stand solidly on the foundation of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the enemy is not going to be able to move you off that place. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What does the enemy try to throw against us? He's not throwing physical weapons. He's not shooting physical arrows or throwing physical darts. It's all aimed for our head. It's all aimed for our heart. It's trying to get into us and tell us that God won't. God can't. God isn't able to. God isn't there for you. God can't heal you. God can't save you. God can't win this battle. But the enemy is a liar. And if we take up that shield of faith, of complete confidence in our God and his word and his promises, those darts, those attacks against us are going to stop dead right there because, because we're going to know that not only can God do it, God will do it. God will heal. God will save. God will protect. God will defend. God is there for us. God will win. God is never going to lose we're going to have that shield of faith to protect us from doubt and discouragement and everything else the enemy wants to throw at us. Verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation, which protects your mind. We see it later in Scripture referred to as the helmet of the hope of salvation. Hold on to that hope. Keep that hope of salvation those thoughts of heaven and everything that our Lord has prepared for us, keep that first and foremost in your head and don't let anything else get in there and shake you from that hope. Finally, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We come back to the Word of God. We started with it, with the belt of truth. Now, now we take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Because now, as we've put these things on, we've stayed in the Word of God, we've learned the Word of God, now we can use it. When the enemy comes against us, when he speaks doubt and fear and discouragement, we can speak faith, we can speak hope, we can speak love. We can take up Scripture against the enemy and put him to flight. So I know I've kind of rambled, I've literally done all this off the cuff here, but in closing... Be strong in the Lord. Stand on Him. Trust in Him. Recognize the battle that you're really fighting. It's not the people around you. It's not politicians. It's not media. It's not your neighbor who offended you. It's spirits. It's spiritual wickedness in high places that's trying to get you focused on people and not on the true enemy. Because if you can't see the true enemy, you cannot fight against him. So recognize the true enemy for who he is. Recognize that God has given you the armor and the tools that you need to stand against him. Friends, we're going to win this. We are going to win. We are going to stand victorious with our Lord and our God in the end. Just stand strong on him. Stand in his word. Trust him in all things. And fight the right battles. You're already on the winning side. God bless you all. We'll talk to you next time.